Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. We're doing St. Polycarp and we're looking at Robertson's sketch of church history, which is in the public domain, which you can use and there's no light on it. So we're looking at uh, Polycarp and I hope you agree that the biographies that we've been looking at have been tremendously encouraging. St. Polycarp. About the same time with Justin the Martyr, St. Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrina, was put to death. He was a very old man, for it was almost 90 years since he had been converted from heathenism, and he had known St. John, and he's supposed to have been made Bishop of Smyrina by the Apostle himself, and he had been a friend of St. Ignatius, which we have seen suffered martyrdom 50 years before. From all these things, and from his wise and holy character, he was looked up to as a father by all the churches, and his mild advice had sometimes put all end to differences of opinion, which but for he, him might have turned into lasting quarrels. When the persecution reached Myrina in the reign of Marcus Aurelius, a number of Christians suffered with great constancy, and the heathen multitude being provoked by their refusal to give up their faith cried out for the death of Polycarp. The aged bishop, although he was ready to die for his saviour, remember that it was not right to throw himself in the way of danger so he left the city and went first to one village in the neighborhood and then to another but he was discovered in his hiding place and when he saw the soldiers who would come to seize him he calmly said God's will be done he desired that some food should be given to them and while they were eating he spent the time in prayer he was then set on an ass and led towards Myrina and when he was near the town one of the heathen magistrates came by his chariot took him up into it. The magistrate tried to persuade Polycarp to sacrifice to the gods, but finding that he could make nothing of him, he pushed him out of the chariot so roughly that the old man fell and broke his leg. But Polycarp bore the pain without showing how much he was hurt, and the soldiers, soldiers led him into the amphitheater, where great numbers of people were gathered together. When all these saw him, they set up loud cries of rage and savage delight. But Polycarp thought as he entered the place that he heard a voice saying to him, Be strong and play the man. And he did not heed all the shouting of the crowd. The governor desired him to deny Christ and said that if he would, his life should be spared. But the faithful bishop answered, Four score and six years have I served Christ, and have never done me wrong, and I'd nev he'd never done me wrong. How then can I now blaspheme my king and saviour? The governor again and again urged him as if in friendly way to sacrifice, but Polycarp steadfastly refused. He next threatened to let wild beasts loose on him, and as Polycarp still showed no fear, he said that he would burn him alive. You threatened me, said the bishop, with fire with the last but a short time, but you know not that the eternal fire which is prepared for the wicked. A stake was then set up and a pile of wood was collected around. Polycarp walked to the place with a calm and cheerful look, and as the executioners were going to fasten him to the stake with an iron cramps, he begged them to spare themselves the trouble. He who gives me the strength to bear the flames, he said, will enable me to remain steady. He was therefore only tied to the stake with cords, and as he stood thus bound, he uttered a thanksgiving for being allowed to suffer after the pattern of his Lord and Saviour. When his prayer was ended, the wood was set on fire. But we are told that the flames swept around him, looking like the sail of a ship swollen by the wind, while he remained unhurt in the midst of them. One of the executioners, seeing this, plunged a sword into the martyr's breast, and the blood rushed forth in such a stream that it put out the fire. But the persecutors who were resolved that the Christians should not have their bishop's body lighted the wood again and burnt the corpse, so that only a few of the bones remained and these Christians gathered out and gave them an honourable burial. It was on Easter Eve that St. Polycarp suffered in the year of our Lord, 166 AD. That's the heritage that you have as a Christian. Stand fast for the Lord, my friend. Stand fast for the Lord. 